Okay, this is a sizing saw at the sawmill. What I'm doing is I'm getting all the roof boards down to uh, nine inches. It's got a feed mechanism on it, so it really helps out. I need a little help at the end of the cut. Okay, I got about 30 of those to do. Okay, when I get this load here sized, uh, I'll be head back to the cabin and then I'm gonna start working on the, uh, getting that shed dormer sheathed in. As you can see, these are rough sawn boards. This is, uh, these are full size two by tens, two inch by 10 inches. So the first pass on sizing, I take them to nine and a half and that gets rid of a lot of this stuff here. And uh, then I run it through the second time, take it down to nine. So they're all parallel and nice fits. Uh, this, this load here is about 80% Ponderosa pine, and about 20% Douglas fir, because the Douglas fir and the pine are very similar in their colorations. You see the hues of the, these two wood species, the, the rosy pink color in the Douglas fir is very similar to what occurs every once in a while on the Ponderosa and the knot color of the Ponderosas. When I put oil on it in the finished product, oh, the colors really are pretty and the Douglas fir is a really nice accent on the wood. Okay, taking a little break here. I'm halfway done. I'm going to start flipping the boards over. I'm going to move my truck over so I can take them right off the saw bed here and uh, load them up. Okay, let's get some quiet here. Okay, now I gotta change the size. Second pass and the final pass is gonna be nine inches. This saw here is oh, way over a hundred years old. I wonder how many fingertips it's taken off in that time. <laughs> well, I came with 10 and I hope to go home with 10. So let me show you this over here, give you a little better idea of these colors. The sun here. Yeah. You can see that's a piece of Ponderosa, but you can see the pinks and the oranges and then here, here's another one over here. So the two really mix together nice. And because they were a little short on Ponderosa, I'm putting this in with the Doug fur. Pretty high tech device here. So let's get this thing over to nine inches. Okay. I'm it. That's a little too much. Okay, now they're all going to be the same size. Fit together real nice. Okay, this is going to be the final size. So I put the cut size to the fence. There it goes. our finished edge real nice I'm gonna take my disc grinder and just cut that down on the sides of spacing down you're looking up at laying on top of the log rafters looks like something get a little hot uh, that'll cool it off okay there's uh, 30 pieces that's enough to finish that shed roof addition roof some really pretty wood really dry too so when this gets that oil on it, boy, it looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna go take you over and show you a few logs here at the sawmill, it's pretty interesting. Here's what we use to keep our driveway nice and clean. I don't like gravel, I love that bark. Okay, there's a nice load of Douglas fir logs that just came in. There's some 36, 40 inches in that pile. That's some beautiful wood over there. That's one heck of a Doug fir log around here. I mean, Oregon, that's pretty typical, but Southern Colorado, that's a big tree, especially at our altitude here. That's big enough to make some kitchen countertops or something. Okay, this morning I'm getting all the materials prepped for the sheathing 
on the shed roof of Dormer up here uh, that I already framed up. And I'll take you up there, give you a little look at that, and then I'll show you some of the materials prep. Okay, these are the boards that we sized at the sawmill yesterday. So they've got our two really nice edges, and they're, uh, they're a good fit uh, for one another. So what I'm going to do is just take the uh, disc grinder, and I'm going to just put a little cushion on this, get that sharpness off, because they're pretty sharp. But it also looks really nice when you, you look up and you see that cushion edge there. A little more handwork. And also it gets any super smoothness out, and it makes it just a little bit more rugged like the rough sawn look it already has. Okay, uh, by doing this on the ground, it makes it so I only have to bring a one cross-cut saw up on the roof with me and uh, the nail gun. So the less I've got up there, the better off I am, and I can do a probably better job standing here on the ground uh, to make this look nice. So uh, I'm going to start the generator up and uh, get out my Makita 5-inch uh, disc grinder and fix this all up. I've got to do about 23, 24 of them, so uh, I'm going to get them all stocked up over here and prepped, and then we're going to carry them up on the roof and uh, start to put them down. Uh, initially, when I framed the roof of the cabin, all the logs were just continuous, and there was no shed roof dormer. But when my wife and I got up here, and we just saw the views, there's the old extinct volcano. And there's a Mesa Grande, or Fisher's Peak. We decided, yeah, we gotta do something to take advantage of this. Plus, I'm pretty tall, and uh, a little more headroom wouldn't hurt. And we decided to put a skylight right in the middle of this middle bay here. So, uh, I've got some videos uh, that you've already seen that show this uh, big live edge beam Douglas fir getting cut up at the sawmill. And also all the wood that's been prepped now everywhere else in the cabin I've used this one by ten which is actually one and a sixteenth thick so it's really strong sheathing but I had I thought enough stacked up and ready for the whole roof and well I ran short and they didn't have any more ponderosa logs especially dry so we found some old two by tens he had that had been there for a couple years that were very dry now granted it's kind of overkill but it'll look the same underneath because they're all cut to nine inches just like the other boards are and uh well okay and since i'm doing this myself a 16 foot four by eight beam it's a little bit rugged so what i did here is what you call a scarf joint and i cut it in the middle and had plenty left over because I, I only needed 14 foot so i've got the scarf joint made here and then that's attached with timber locks to this support post, so plenty strong. It's also a way to straighten out a beam if it's got a little bit of a crook in it, as long as you have a support post. So uh, the room up here has got the transoms, of course, all the way across the top. If you saw my Thanksgiving dinner video, you saw the little tour. And then the gables are all glass as well. And then these are going to be two awnings that crank out. And I think... Uh, Sorry about that. I think right here, this one in the middle is going to be a crank window too. Okay, so now I'm going to set up, run a chalk line, figure out my overhang, and uh, start to put these boards on. As you can see, the view up here is pretty nice. I got a view of the whole box canyon that's below us, down about 150 feet. And then I've got, there's a logging road up here. And uh, there's my water tank that I put on the truck. And then, uh, actually, if you look over there, you can see the East Spanish Peak, just the tip of it. 
we're blocked off from the view of the Sangre de Cristos, which is a shame, but living here year round, let me tell you what, we're also out of that hard northwest wind that comes. So, ah, we want to see those mountains. We just climb up on the hill over here a little bit. Okay, now what I got to do is I'm going to determine the measurement off of the outside of the beam over where I'm going to have the overhang cut off. And I'm going to go out about, I calculated because I want to have them line up. The lower roof and the upper roof be the same. So I'm just going to plumb a mark there and get it. And then I'll set a nail on there to be kind of a helper for me to hold the boards in place while I get that first row nailed down. Then it's just a matter of making a pattern and moving up. And also, I've got to figure up, i got one, two, three, four, five rows of the 10 inch boards, or actually 9 inch, to the bottom of that skylight. And I want the skylights to be the same height away from the overhang. So I'll come up that many rows and then I'll calculate my two foot by four foot rough opening for the skylight. And that'll also be kind of a hatch door for me to be able to climb out and get onto the roof. Okay, I want to figure out what I got to do here and get some nails set. Okay, I determined my overhang and uh, got my first board cut. So what I'm going to do now is ramp my nail gun. And I'm going to pre-measure a couple pieces, lay them up here so I don't have to keep climbing down the ladder. And just lay them up where they're going to go behind me and get the first two or three rows down and then uh, I'm going to bring the ladder over and lay it up where the skylight's going to go and get that all figured out and then most of the work is getting the materials ready and getting it up here especially when you're by yourself because I'm probably I don't know 23 feet off the ground here because the lot drops off into the canyon from the front to the back so the front's three feet and uh, the back of the house is maybe eight feet off the ground on the first floor so we're pretty much up there okay i want to set the tripod up and uh, put it over somewhere so you can see me shooting these boards down but i forgot one thing i got to climb down and get a clamp because this bow's got a little bit of a twist to it but it's not the wrong way it's just up and down but i can pull it down and nail it and it'll hold it okay 